So you're getting ready to start using Excel. And Excel is a very powerful tool. I think you should, you're going to be very proud of, you're going to be, find it uh, very useful. At any rate, uh, this is the spreadsheet that you end up finishing on this first exercise. And it looks, the sheet looks like this when you're done. And the chart that you create is uh, a monthly expense chart. So let's come back to the spreadsheet and start from the beginning. What you should understand about a spreadsheet is that it always works in columns, rows, and cells. Okay, so the first thing, uh, there's a couple of bits of terminology that you want to understand is the difference between a workbook and a worksheet. A workbook is like a notebook. And it is it's inside the work and, and inside the workbook is our sheets, each each of which is called a worksheet. Thus a work uh, workbook is a collection of worksheets. And worksheets allow users to enter, calculate, uh, manipulate, and analyze data such as numbers and text. And the terms worksheet and spreadsheet are interchangeable. So what I, I really want you to understand is Okay, this is sheet one. I can add as many sheets as I want to this particular workbook. So just you should understand the difference between a workbook and a worksheet. Now I'm going to delete some of these sheets I just created to make it less confusing. So I can again delete sheets, I can add sheets. And you can see that I added sheets through the uh, by using the plus. Now each worksheet contains columns and that's the the letters coming across the top and that's column A this is column K and rows row 7 row 19 they're all different rows they work individually when you're in a cell it's the box where they meet and in this case you can see I'm in uh, K 19 and it actually shows up here on my status bar what cell that I'm in. You're going to be referencing those cells and using them on a regular basis. So you, you just really need to understand uh, the, the cells themselves. Now let's go to the size of this one worksheet. Remember it's in a workbook, so it's, it's, it, that one sheet can get huge. If I come up to cell A1 and then I just hit my end key and go all the way to the end, what happens is, as you can see, it's coming through the alphabet to Z, then it starts AA, and then it starts over again. So if I hit my arrow key to the right, I'm ending up in XFD. So it's gone through the alphabet uh, at least, you know, I don't know, uh, hundreds of times and to get to this point. So let me come back home with the control home, and I'm going to show you how many rows there are in this sheet. Notice that right now my screen is showing 39 rows. Well, there are a total of what 1,048,576 rows available in the spreadsheet. So the thing that I have seen in the past is that somebody will come up here hit a space bar or something in a, in a cell, a space is a character, and now they have actually increased the size of this worksheet. So if I got ready to print this, it would be printing 22,310 documents. You can see that down here because of that one cell that I can't even see. So you need to be careful at times when you're working with spreadsheets and always look at the results here when you're getting ready for a print. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to clear that column and then come control home, come back up and just check my print preview again. There's nothing to be shown. So let's just go through and add the first little bit of information that the textbooks tells you to add. And that is, um, those are the words personal, oops, I kind of,
my hand slipped a little bit. So that's the reason why you got that bling in there. But as you can see, this is all going in cell A1, and it's the full word. And when I hit enter, that is now in the cell. So that confirms it. And that and and uh, your instructions are showing you how to do it uh, with one other B. And that is to show you uh, how to, I'll show you what the instructions are telling you. It's telling you to use the check mark up here, which you can. That is the same as hitting enter on your keyboard. I'm just accustomed to hitting enter on my keyboard. And that enters it into the same spot. Now I'm going to enter the rest of the text, and I certainly don't want you to watch it all, so I'm going to pause my video. Okay, so this is the remainder of the text that you're supposed to uh, enter for this activity. And the one thing that I wanted to make sure that I covered was the fact that, see, this, I kept typing, and it did flow over to the B column, but the words personal budget worksheet are only in the A column. See, so I can manipulate that column, and it will stay there. So you need to be careful of that. Don't, don't look at your screen and think that's what the way you have to do it. Type it a cell at a time because that's the way the program is working. Okay, next step. Now the next step um, after all your text is entered, your textbook is telling you uh, to um, create an auto sum. Uh, I just realized my formulas are already there, so I'm going to pause this again and take the formulas off. Okay, so this is where you should be when you get to about page 12. You've got all this information entered, and you are now getting ready to add some of the information. So if I look, okay, these were numbers, and I want to sum those two numbers. The way you do this, there's a feature called Auto Sum. And I'm going to show you the easiest way and the way the book's going to probably tell you to do it as well. So first off, go to hum, Home, hit the Auto Sum, and see how it gets these little dancing ants around the numbers that it's adding. And it's telling you, okay, I'm going to add uh, B4 through B5. And so you hit Enter. And now this is called a relative cell reference. So what's going to happen? I'm going to use what we call the autofill feature, and it's going to um, it's going to fill it's going to copy this all the way across. And notice that right now I'm in cell B4, so I'm going to grab that little handle. That's called a fill handle right there, that little box. Take it across to December, and that brought in all of the totals for the rest of that month. And, and that gives you the, the income wages. And, but I want, what I want to show you is, and I want to show you the formulas. So let me show you the formulas real quick. See how it, it's now, it's summed here, B through, B4 through B5, there's C4 through C5. When I copied it across, it, it's relative to the column that it's on. So it's called, that's why it's called a relative cell reference. When I copied it across, the B4 changed to C4. C4 in the C column, and D4, and so on. So each one, they're relative to the, the, um, the cell that you're on. So that's, real, that's a real important feature that we will be expanding on in later chapters. So you just need to understand the difference between the relative cell reference, and we will eventually be going to an absolute cell reference. OK, so now I'm going to turn and, and take my, my uh, um, <coughs> show hide off okay and create another one now i told you i was going to show you a simple way a range of cells here highlight them because i want totals to come in there and now i i just highlighted them all now excel knows to go um to look for where a, a list of numbers and a, a space or a value a value would be like these labels january february march april so it's going to stop right here at the row 9 and row 16. So when I hit my auto sum, there we go. And let's look at our formulas. See where it's now. It's going from 9 to 16 on the B column, the C column, the D column, and the E column. So it, it just knew to do that because 
the numbers were above and they're in each column and it's a consistent formula. So now I'm going to come back and do my other totals, which I can do the same way. Now this one's going to know, and there was a reason why you put these zeros in here. See, if those were spaces, then they would, then they would not know to do the auto sum. So, so now, because there's a number in there, even though it's a zero, it knows to, to sum across the row. So here we go, auto sum. And um, I can do the same thing here, auto sum. And let's just take a look again at those formulas and come down to the total so you can see. This one was everything in the B column, or, or B to, it's everything in the fourth row, B to M. Okay, and same thing here, B to M in the fifth row, sixth row, ninth row, tenth, and you can see the numbers changing as you go down. Those are all relative cell references. All right, so let's move forward. This next step, you're building a simple formula um, to, to subtract the income, the expenses from the income. So whenever you're doing something like that, what you do is you just start with your equal key. And this is what's real important is I want you to make sure that you're not typing in cell references. So they're clicking on and making cell references. So when I hit my equal sign, I'm going to click. This is my income. Then I'm going to subtract and hit my total. Now the the uh, um, I can finish this one by clicking on the check again or just hitting my enter key and my formula is confirmed. Okay. Since this formula is the same all the way across, I can apply the same features that I did in the previous total. Because all I'd have to do is, is come to this point, get my cell that I want to copy, go to my fill handle, and just take her all the way across. There. And I have all the totals. And you see that there's some negative amounts in there as well. So those are bad months, obviously. I didn't make enough money for my expenses. Okay, next. Okay, now the, the next part, portion, we're actually on uh, page 21 of your uh, chapter. Um, if you look at the first area up here, we're going to be doing some formatting. And that what they're having you use is what we call this the uh, um, styles that are available in Excel and it makes it a little bit easier for you to 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 work with the document so um, so let's take a good look at these styles if you pull down the style sheet and you can see they're right here if I pull down the sheet I've got options to choose different types of styles that I want to use in the document. So in this case, I want the title style to be first. Then they're telling you to, to go on and make that bold as well. Now the monthly expenses, you're supposed to use the title style as well, although they want you to change the font size. And there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, the textbook is showing you to come here and change it to 14. You could also do the same thing by using the uh, decrease font size button and bring it down to 14. Again, that one's bold. Now they're wanting you to work with some of the uh, um, color options. So in this case, you're going to the cell A1 again and you're choosing the orange um, accent too. Now just be careful, this, is, this feature follows through on all of um, the documents as far as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, they're all similar, but um, the theme is going to make a difference. And if you don't have the right theme in play, then you're not going to get the colors that you're looking for. So here's orange accent two. I have the office theme active, so that's, that's the theme that's happening here. Now the next feature they're having you use is called Emergence Center. And um, they want you to take the cells here, 
and come all the way across to N and merge and center. It's very simple to do. You just have to click on it and it happens. And the same thing with the monthly estimates, merge and center. Um, looks like I was supposed to change that one orange as well. So that's changed. <clears throat> In this next option, you're starting to use some of the other styles, which are the heading styles. So I will be coming through and choosing a heading style. And I believe this is supposed to be heading one. And you can see that it changes those headings. Here we go down to this lower one. Actually, I could have used the Format Painter on that, um, but we'll use the Format Painter on some of the others. Okay, this feature you should be using quite often, and so I'm going to, I'm going to give you a, a peek of how it works. It's actually um, the, you want to select a split range of cells. So I'm going to do these, these two titles. I'm going to hold down my Control key, click on the second group of titles, and when I've got them all ready, then I can then I then I'm ready to go. Then I want to change this to um, it's supposed to be ax it's supposed to be format the cell with accent two. Okay, what I'm doing here now is formatting the total column the total row, and now I'm going to hold down my control key and grab it. I should. The other one was a little confused. Okay, here I am. And to do the total row is this one. Now we're at A19, coming across and formatting with accent to style. So in that case, what we're doing is we're looking for just the accent to without any uh, um, percentage. Now the rest of these we're doing um, different formats. And again, we can use our control key for that. And so these are the lighter formats um, underneath here. Hold down my control key and I want the rent. The tuition. And I can come with the other one here. And the gas. Now I've kept my control key down throughout all of that so that I have. So I have other, every other row. And this one's supposed to be accent 2, 20%. So come back up to accent 2, and there we're at the lighter rows. And let's do the darker ones. Uh, hold my control key down. Okay, so now I'm coming with my, that has my control key down, and that one's supposed to be uh, 40%. Okay, so that gives you the next one, and we're formatting numbers now. Numbers are very important. Okay, so what they want is um, we're going to be doing some accounting numbers with and without, um, with and without uh, uh, the dollar sign. So <clears throat> when you come to the first row up here, those are the ones that are going to have the dollar sign. So if I come into my format number option, you can see that I have accounting and I can choose what the symbol is. And this is really great because in here, see, there's lots of different symbols to choose from. And if you were working with internationally, you'd want to use the correct symbol for that, whatever that one, uh, the, the currency is. But this is the currency for this one, and it's two decimal places. So we've got that one. And then there. So since we're working with currency, and um, it, it's an accounting process, 
So you notice that only the total rows and the first row have the dollar signs. So what I want to do now is to grab these other rows and I'm going to come in and do my control key. And, da, da, da. and now all I need to do is to go into the home tab and come back to my numbers. And here I choose accounting and I take off the dollar sign. There's none now and I can click on OK. And so then all my decimals line up and all my figures make sense. OK. Onward ho. OK, uh, one thing that your uh, chapter mentions that is Im real important in more advanced features of Excel. And it's nice to know that, you know, it you can you can jump to different areas in the spreadsheet by just clicking in information, typing the information here. So if I wanted to go to A3 and I hit enter, see my, my cursor is now on A3. Well, that's one of the things. But in the future, you're going to be naming cells and those kind of things. And it, it doesn't happen in this particular class, but it will in a more advanced feature of Excel. So it's nice to know that that name box, what it, its real function is. Now, for the next thing we're going to do is to, is to go ahead and, and create your, um, your pie chart. And we're doing that by highlighting all of the expenses and just the totals. So again, we're holding our control key down and grabbing the totals. And next, what you do is go into Insert. And we're going into a pie chart. And I believe you're doing a 3D pie chart. Here it is. And see that we're just about there. And but now what I need to do is make that chart go on its own sheet. Ah, and I'm in the wor wrong workbook. Just one second. Oh, let me hold on. Now, so again, I'm going into grabbing all of the expenses, coming to just the totals. Hold my control key down, grab the totals, and then insert and 3D pie. Now, at this point, you want to right click. Uh, not there. I need to right click a little higher there and move the chart and to a new sheet. And I think it's supposed to be called monthly expense chart. Okay. So I brought one in to a, a, a sheet that was already there. But then what you're going to do <clears throat> is start manipulating this. You're going to be changing things like the, uh, um, <clears throat> the, the title, change it to monthly expenses. And then this is the legend. Just make sure that it's big enough. And then you're going to be working with this, this particular uh, Okay, when I th when I pull this print preview, I find ah, I've got a problem. My my sheet's getting cut off. I, it's actually printing three pages instead of one, and so I need to change my settings. And what I do is I go into page setup, change it to landscape, and then fit to one. And when I look at it now. It all fits to one page and things are looking good. You may ask yourself one question was why didn't the chart show up on that printout? It's because I simply didn't have it selected. If I come here now and go to print again and put in instead of active sheets, print entire workbook, you'll see that I have the chart and the, and the uh, spreadsheet. The book has some very good references to correcting errors and um, clearing cells or range of cells. Um, make sure that you read over this material and hopefully look at them in your lesson notes as well.